What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're back. So, welcome back. Uh, it's been a long winter holidays. We've been busy. We caught up with the exams and all sorts. So, we haven't been so active. But now we're back on the channel and... Well, recently, to be honest, um, a lot of students have been sending me messages throughout the holidays on more to ask for more detailed advice on how to really study and make it. What you already did something similar like that? Why doing it again? True, but this time they wanted something more detailed. Should I did, bro? The first thing I think that is important to study is to make sure you have a study strategy to follow. What I mean by that? Like how? What, do you what I mean is that, for example, one of the biggest parts of having a study strategy is to know that you need to be studying in a developmental stages. You can't possibly imagine to master the content in your first or second year just like that. There's a lot of content, a lot of subjects, so you need to have a plan to follow. So by the end of your med school, you've mastered everything. So firstly, before I get into the details on how to study, I need you to bear in mind that everything I talk about is regarding studying the topics organ system wise. Learn how to learn. Know yourself and which is the best way you learn and it was the most efficient way to you, for you to learn and not waste time. And really get the most out of your studies. So learn the material. Get to what the? I mean, yo. Oh. So learn the material, get to know the material, not master it, but be familiar with it. So, fat books, one of the first categories of the three categories I made. How are we going to use the fat books? The fat books are basically your anchor points or the base of the pyramid. You use these fat books to get familiar with the content, to learn the material, and to use them as a reference point. But not to fully read each page, each detailed line, and memorize everything because that's you'll never finish the book. You're not specializing in it, you're just a med student to get to know everything. So, how where to start with them? You use the first aid book, use the first aid book as a guidebook on which topics in which section of the fat book you need to focus on and make your notes on them. My line. So once you've studied the organ system and you're familiar with it, you know what it's all about, you've done the uh, embryo, anatomy, physio, histology, pathophysio, pharma, all everything to do with that subject. So you've, you've done and dusted with that organ system. Now if you want, you can go to the next organ system or you can do it again and master it. Personally, I finished all the organ systems and got familiar with them and I got to know them what it's all about I then came back and then I started to master each organ system now to master the organ systems what I did was I then finished with the fat books and the first it as a guide now I'm, it's time to master it so I now started using Kaplan I started using Kaplan lecture notes and now once I'm using Kaplan lecture notes because I already know what the lecture notes are already talking about I was now able to memorize more, recall more, and now finally master the content and get to know it like the back of my hand. So I started using the Kaplan lecture notes. Now there's two ways to go about this. I did both ways. For certain subjects or topics, the Kaplan lecture notes for myself were enough. I didn't have to watch the corresponding Kaplan lecture videos. Now if you want to get more detailed information on the lecture notes or want to understand it more, watch the videos with them. However, I, from my experience, not every lecture note or topic required the video with it. A lot of the times, the video just repeated what the text was saying, and it just helps you get through the study. Rather than you, you know, putting your own effort in reading, you, it was like a teacher is in front of you, helping you to pretty much grind through the content. 
So that's up to you how you want to go through. So now that you have mastered all the organ systems, you've done the Kaplan, you've been using your fat books as references, now it's time to close everything up and review everything and put a nice tight knot on it. You use the first aid book to really focus now, not on the fat books anymore, but now on your Kaplan lecture notes, that from the Kaplan lecture notes, all the high yield information that you must, must know from the first aid book. And again, throughout the whole, all three stages of a developmental study, you want to be doing questions, all right? What you also want to be doing is that um, throughout mastery now, you want to um, separate your notes. So you have your own written notes from the fat books, have your own written notes, the lecture notes from the Kaplan, and then you add more to your notes every time you study through, which I'll go on to in a second on making notes. Once you've mastered all this content, what you want to do next now is you go on to the clinical content, which for I will make another video in the future, so stay tuned. I like your hair by the way. Where did you get the haircut from? It's so silly, yo. Yeah, yeah. Enough. Anyway, in this section, what I'm going to talk about now is how to make your notes. So now you know. Oh, I hate it. I'd rather sleep, yeah. Making notes is very important. Now that you know the developmental stages and how to study and using the resources, what you want to do is make your notes. The whole reason of making notes is that you don't go back to your fat books again, okay? The big, it wastes time. You need some quick access, important information that you need to know. Just in case, if you go back to your notes, it's not there. You can always go back to your reference points, your fat books, your internet, and add on to your notes. So you, the idea of making notes is to minimize your resources, save time, and ease of access. Otherwise, you start getting frustrated. It's all over the place. You're on organ. Wake up, yo. Yeah. So. <clears throat> How do you make notes? Now, to make notes, there's a number of ways you can go about it. I like the two ways that I did. For the step one of making notes, of, of the studying, was that I used Microsoft OneNote on a laptop. Simply because if I wrote my notes down, I could draw my diagrams on it, I could write my notes down on it, I could write my notes using a graphics tablet. Really easy, really fun. The software is really good. You can type a keyword, and it can pick up that keyword, whether you've written it, whether it's on a picture, whether it's just typed. It can pick up that and show you on which page that note is, and you get all your information from there. Ease of access, basically. <sighs> That's long, yo. Who has the time? Is, it is. Yes. It is, yes. It is long, but however, in the long run, I'll give you my word, it's so damn useful that you will never, ever waste time again. Now, once you've done that, that's, that's your notes on a big reference book, so you don't have to go to the big fat books anymore, you can just go to your own notes. When you're on to the Kaplan stage, or before that, so you made your notes, and you're done with the uh, reference notes, you then make sure you put them into folders, okay? So you have an organ system folders for each organ system. You have a cardiovascular organ system folder, respiratory organ system folder, yada yada yada, all the other ones. So your patho is in one folder, your physio is in that folder, everything to do with that organ system. And these are your own written notes and written diagrams, okay? Your own handwritten notes. So once you reach the Kaplan stage and you've done with the fat books and making notes, you now need to make a new set of notes. This new set of notes will be annotations and written notes on top of the Kaplan lecture notes. That's what I did. So I, I now made new folders with the Kaplan notes. Again, same way, organ system folders, but new folders now. Because obviously you can't put an organ system, an organ system in one big folder. It's just too much again. So your previous written notes, now, be, now they become your reference points. You go back to those for reference as you begin to master your content, your organ systems with the Kaplan lecture notes. So put your Kaplan lecture notes, for example, on, on the endocrine system, the endocrine, physio, patho, anatomy, and all those lecture notes in one folder, annotate them, watch the videos if you need to, and if you need to go back to reference, use your old notes that you already made as reference points and to add on to your Kaplan lecture notes. 
that way you're always building up going back and forth recalling and you're just reinforcing the content in your mind once you finish with the Kaplan stage now is to go back with the first aid book and tie everything up you use the first aid book to review everything from the Kaplan lecture notes now and the way I did this was I despined my first aid book and I got each organ system notes from the first aid book and I put them into the corresponding folders of my organ systems from the Kaplan lecture notes and again do questions throughout the whole stages and finish that's it and you should be good to go and now you will want to clinical content <laughs> Will you, will you please just, just for a moment just stop this clownery? Now, a new section organization. Even if the previous things, if I were to rank everything I've talked about so far, this is the most important one. Organization is key throughout med school and even into your medical career throughout your life. You need to be punctual, you need to be organized, and you need to know where you are, where you stand, what you're capable of, and what you're not capable of, and work on your weaknesses. Make a strategy, like I just told you. This was my strategy to study in developmental stages, minimize my resources. And now, I just use my folders. Every time I need to know something, go back to my folders. Something's missing, I go online, or go to reference books, and I just add that word in, or that sentence in. Keep to a study schedule. Make a schedule saying, oh, by the end of the next two weeks, I'm going to finish off the um, uh, GI system, for example, or a certain topic of medical or biochemistry, I'm going to finish off by the end of the month. Then stick to it. Split your hours throughout the day. Know what you're going to do. Plan ahead. Yes, nothing, every, nothing ever goes to plan. However, you still have a backbone structure, something that if something doesn't go to plan, you can curve around it. You have con 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 Contingent, so you, if something doesn't go to your plan, like the next day something comes up, you have a contingency plan to make up for it. Let's say you had a schedule and some things just didn't go the way you wanted to, and now you're behind your schedule. What do you do now? Well, stick to the schedule, okay? Maybe extend the time, okay? By the next three days, I'll make up for it. Or if you still can't, amend your schedule. Maybe you can come back to certain topics later where you don't think are so important, or you think you can, you know, you can make up for it. It's no problem. You can handle it. So organization, punctuality is a big, big, big thing you need to keep in your mind. If you're someone who can't do that or have very, very difficulties in maintaining that, then I'm going to be blunt. You're not ready to go to med. You're not for the medical career. Not in medicine. I'm sure it's the same for law, for engineering, for all these high maintenance careers. You need to be organized. Now, some final words of advice is that sometimes you will feel like you're overwhelmed by the content or you've missed some you missed too much of a chunk it's hard to get up to go to school the lectures are boring yeah, and admit but sometimes but you just can't get up in the morning and just go to class you know it's just uh, it's too much it's true i mean here at jail you we're not here to Tell you the truth. We're, here to, we're not here to tell you the lie. <laughs> we're here to tell you the truth of what the reality is. Yes, some lectures are amazing, very few. So most of the lectures are pretty boring. Uh, some lectures you just feel like you are completely wasting your time and tuition fee. So in those senses, it is very demotivating and hard to pull through your years, especially the third and fourth years. Yeah, but I feel very down and sometimes just, like, what should I be doing then to tackle that? Well, once you start feeling down and you feel like you're spiraling down, you're being overwhelmed by everything, the best thing to do is that you need to know nothing is imperfect. It's not all over yet. If you can't pay attention to the teacher and the lecture, take your laptop, take your iPad, take your media resources and watch Kaplan lecture videos for that same thing that you're studying in class or any other medical video that like like for example doctors in training is one example 
you need to know that there's one thing I will point out to do very well and excel in the medical field you need to have the heart for it you have to want it in your own heart you want to be feeling like, I want to be in the clinic I want to be standing next to the patient in a surgical room I want to be that first assistant second I want to be the head surgeon I want to be the anesthesiologist I want to make a difference in their lives however if you don't feel like you feel like you're being forced to study you feel like it's the only thing you can do there's nothing else to do you feel like your parents are making you do it's not what you want think again and if you're somebody considering medicine and only because your parents are sending you here think very carefully because this is five to six years of grinding in an unknown country new language where teachers sometimes don't even know how to speak proper English and you have to take up most responsibilities on your own soldiers yourself which can get very tough you need to have a willpower to succeed I know it's easy to say and easy to speak and then to do but you know I still don't feel so motivated I mean <laughs> maybe the people around when you the environment it's making me feel really bad that's another big point if you are one of those people let's say you're already here now and you're not feeling motivated to study then I, I would suggest in my experience for example is make some friends that are motivated to study make some friends hang around with the people that you see are serious about medicine that they want it truly with their heart maybe they can motivate you maybe they can help you learn some of the topics and really show that it's not tough it's easy see medicine in their perspective and that can really help you lift your mood and spirits up as well it does with me and I can tell you now that there are students that feel like that and you know there are seniors out there that are willing to give a helping hand just go and ask for that helping hand no one's gonna judge you no one's going to look at you and say oh you know you don't know your stuff why are you here you're here and your story they're just there to help you then. and you know what's the motivational speech is I mean have some hobbies by the way go out do some stuff don't be sitting in your room all the time just study yes it's a demanding uh, major you do need to study and need to put effort and time in however you can you must you must have outside hobbies if you're a guy go to the gym go skateboarding go rock climbing go archery there's so much to do in the city um, make some routine to follow you know painting going out with your friends going to try different foods just do something out of study okay and overall you know if you're already here keep studying keep trying your best it will work out you will get that degree you will inshallah make it work or put the effort in and be serious about it if you're somebody that's still thinking of coming it is a good place life here is what you make it if you're gonna make a bad life a whack life a boring life you're gonna have a boring life but if you're gonna make an exciting life make something out of your own life you're gonna have a pretty good time it's all in your hands over here it's all in your hands everything is in your hands your social life and your study life it's all in your own hands but that being said Keep tuned. I hope this video was helpful. See you next time. And yo, let's go.